There's a reason why Xtrades is currently the fastest growing application on the market for sharing financial ideas. With over $2.5 million paid in the last two years to contributors, users are flocking to see what trades the top traders on the leaderboard are sharing in real time. If you're looking to grow your reputation as a trader on the internet or discuss your trading ideas with other reputable investors, click the link below and get connected with the trading mentor today, completely free of charge. Okay, X traders, and we are going to continue uh, with uh, plotting indicators. Uh, so, what we're going to be looking at today is in the tools we have this educational uh, X trades education strategy, which we were looking to uh, dive into. But what I want to do is just take a quick look at make this a short enough video at this bunch of code. So let's just go ahead and create a script here. Get out of there. So I'm going to create a new script just to refresh our memories and we're going to call this let's say a plotting script example. Let's just call that make these sample plot script. Okay? All right, and what we want is there's that uh, default or boilerplate code as it is called. And this is what we wanna do, okay? So we want to look at how else we can add things to the chart. So what we want now is how do we add a script that can actually do this kind of thing, right? Okay, simple enough. What we do is, again, so that we don't have to be redefining these if we ever decide to change them, we create inputs, which means that these things can actually be modified by the user, right? 9 and 21. Uh, and we'll look at that uh, once we're playing with this a little bit more. And we'll call the fast and the slow exponential. We'll make them both exponential. We're not going to make anything uh, simple because we've used simple before. So those are just defining four variables, right? One of them whose value is 9, the other one whose value is 21, the other one whose value is exponential type, and so is the other one. Uh, we will leave these so that the user can switch between exponential, simple, and whole, and whatever uh, individually and not have to come into code to change that. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're basically just going to plot the moving average is all you have to do. So go ahead and save this. And remember, this is called sample plot script. So we come over here to the chart and we're going to add this as a study, right? So it should show up because it's a study. So we called it sample, I believe. There it is. So that's what we did. And remember, we already have the green, the red, and the yellow, which are the 50, 100, and 200. So let's go ahead and add this new plot script that we added. And there it is. Okay. And you can see that we created these new uh, moving averages right here. And the cool thing about it is, is that because... Let me go ahead and edit that. Because we made those, remember that we didn't define the F fast MA length and the slow MA length, or the type fast or type slow, we made them input, right? Let me just show you what I'm talking about. Come over here, click on the little scroll icon. Remember, we made these type input, all four of them. That means that the user can actually modify these without knowing how to code. So you can come in here and say, oh, you know what? I wanted to make it 50 and 100, okay? It's gonna be kind of messy because we already have those defined. It would be the green one and it would be the yellow one. So basically the, the blue and the fuchsia, whatever that color is, should actually just disappear and the other green and yellow lines should become thicker when we hit apply, okay? And there it is. So there's the green one and then there's, of course, okay, these are exponentials and these are simple, right? So you can go, go ahead and do that as well. Change from exponential to simple. It knows what the different variables or per parameter op options are for a particular function. So, oops, so let's make both of those simple. Okay, and there you go. See, so they disappeared. So whatever that, the green one turned blue because that one's kind of on top. And then this fuchsia one turned kind of orange because it was yellow, I believe. So fuchsia and orange, I guess, make 
whatever that skin color thing is. Okay, and if we just delete this, then these two lines should appear green and yellow as we delete the ones that we just created, and there it is. All right, so that is what you use the, oops, let me go back here. That is what you use the, not simple, sample. There we go. All right, that is what you use the input versus the def, right? If we were to say def here, for example, those two, then whenever the user added this and applied it, it's still gonna show up, of course, but then when the user comes and tries to edit this, right, then it cannot edit the nine or the 21. It can only edit the other two, which were defined as inputs. So just make sure we're gonna leave these as input because that is the more flexible. Of course, that has to do with coding and performance. If something is input type, then it takes up more memory. Uh, if something is defined, then it doesn't take up mem as much as much memory because it doesn't uh, ever have to be modified, and so it doesn't have to keep track of the different values that the user assigns. So basically, that was it. That was what I wanted to show you, so that next time, we are going to dive into the second part of this education strategy, all right? And just to tease it a little bit, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna create orders, okay? And basically, what this is gonna do is it's going to create orders based on of course, this is not a very sophisticated indicator if you just have a fast and a slow uh, <clears throat> uh, SMA, or well, in this case, EMA. Um, if you actually throw in more stuff, then you can get your own custom indicator that will let you go ahead and add orders to buy and sell, as you can see here. And you can actually go ahead and go back in time and back test this and see if that strategy which you created would have been profitable and that is why this is called the script is called strategy one this is the x trades educational strategy number one which we will cover to completion in the next video so i hope you guys enjoyed this if you have any questions drop comments and don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel and use my invite link in the description below. If you sign up for Xtrades membership plan, I will give you a free video guided tour of the Xtrades Discord community as well as the web application and how you can uh, take the trade signals in both of those platforms and use them. Uh, I'll also throw in my own personal tips and all of my educational material in terms of videos as well as presentations. So I will see you in the next time. Have a great one.